Cameron, thank you so much for joining me today on my sixth episode of Let's Start from the Beginning. And you are, in fact, the person that is marking a milestone for me, proving that I've been doing this for half a year now. <laughs> well, shoot, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to, uh, to, to, to be a part of your journey with this. <laughs> I mean, it, it comes with a, a, a medal, right? Oh yeah, golden star right there. There we go. All right. <laughs> right. What what did they call it? The uh, the Michelin star. That's the. That's yeah, the yeah. Yeah. There we go. Three <laughs> Michelin stars. <laughs> yeah. So for the audience who doesn't know much about you, can you talk a little bit about yourself and what you're actually doing right now in terms of your career? Yeah. Just the uh, the quick nutshell is, um, you know, I'm the lead software engineer with um, a company called Blue Street Studios. They're a they're based out of Huntsville, Alabama, um, which, you know, I, I live here in Chicago, uh, but I've always been working remote with them, you know, for the, ever since I finished school, uh, my undergrad, that is. And, you know, we currently are making games as advertisements for companies that don't normally make games. Um, so you might be, you know, any, any listeners out there Maybe they're playing an app and they receive an advertisement and you know, sometimes it's a video ad Sometimes it's an annoying image that you know, they can try closing out But then you know, they'll their finger is off just by a couple pixels on that little close button And then it opens up the the app store, you know um, But more recently uh, you might be receiving interactive ads that you can actually engage with um, and you know play um, you know, a lot of those ones are characterized as little demos of what the game is that they're advertising. But, you know, we, um, our, our client base is not other games that are already on the App Store. Our client base is, you know, bigger companies like uh, department stores and restaurants. Um, you know, we've even done business with... Uh, notable celebrities that I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I'm able to share, but <laughs> probably you know, best it, you don't. <laughs> so yeah, I won't just to be safe. Um, but you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's rewarding because, you know, the technology is kind of new. So it's like, we're at the forefront of that. Um, and so there's a, a lot of learning that comes along with it. I mean, this whole past week has just been one half, uh, and completely uh, a whole new headache, um, you know, dealing with these ads that I can talk a little bit about. Um, but in addition, oh yeah, and then, you know, in the past, before we, we were doing that, we were doing um, actually music-based games. Uh, you know, when the company, when I first signed up with them, uh, they had just released a game for Eminem, um, which did fairly well. And even today, I mean, the app has been delisted from the store for a while now. Um, but every now and then, you know, you see activity on the servers from those games. Like, who who still has these games on their eight-year-old tablet or whatever? Because, you know, the game came out in, like, maybe early 2016, late 2015. So, you know, people who had tablets, you know... I mean, it's well over seven years old, so eight, eight years. That's where I get that number. But anyways, beside the point. Um, you know, in addition to that, I also actually do mentoring with uh, CG Spectrum, um, which is like a, like a, I don't want to call them a school, but, you know, they provide a, like a, a set of courses to people who want to learn, um, you know, how to break into the games industry really quickly, you know, over, usually over the course of 36 months, um, wait, no, uh, 36 weeks, and, you know, they offer programs uh, for artists, uh, designers, and, you know, programmers, um, which is, you know, the, the stuff that I, uh, I mentor on, um, in the first 12 weeks of that is, you know, just C++, um, I, I, don't know too much C++ myself, but, you know, all the mentoring that goes into that is just, you know, fundamentals, um, and, you know, anybody can look at code and 
provide you know feedback saying you know maybe you need better names um, maybe you should break that that block up into separate functions you know things like that and then just providing recommendations on challenges for them to try um, things that they might not be thinking about themselves um, one challenge that I, I tell them um, when they begin the unreal portion is to you know the, the first week is just getting a door to open and you know they might set up a couple of trigger boxes one on each side of the door and depending on which box that their player collides with um, will affect which way the door opens so you know my recommendation is well let's let's use a single trigger box and then they can um, use the dot product on the door and their player and which will tell them if the player is in front of or behind the door and so based on that information they can figure out you know okay well if it's in front then I need to rotate my door backwards you know and vice versa um, so you know and then I'll just provide overall feedback um, and I've been doing that for like the last year now which you know, a, a typical class might have one to three students. Um, you know, this this recent group that I just started, uh, you know, is three students, um, which is kind of nice because then, you know, the sessions are an hour long once a week. Um, and it's, you know, if, if I don't have anything to talk about, it helps that the students have questions um, to really, uh, you know, uh, poke at my knowledge base. You know, because I mean, I, I could talk about lots, but it's like, okay, you know, what can I talk about that's helping you, that might help you? Um, so any questions that they have, you know, really can drive the conversations and get into the uh, the deeper stuff. Um, and in addition to that, you know, I, I also have a, uh, um, I also have a YouTube channel that I, I periodically try to put put content put content on um, you know we're actually doing this just over the fourth of July weekend just about so I think because it's a long weekend I'm probably gonna try to make a, a, a video on uh, Pac-Man AI you know just to you know because somebody might find that interesting so you know we'll see but uh yeah you know that's currently what I've been doing it's a lot <laughs> Yeah, you, you never cease to amaze me. There's always a lot of stuff that you're doing. So taking all of that into account as well, uh, hence the title, let's start from the beginning of how this all started. When it comes to game design, was this always something you wanted to be in? And what were you even doing before leading into this? Well, yeah, that's an interesting question because, um, you know, when I was in high school, you know, I, I mean, I... I, I knew I wanted to get into games, you know, actually, like, right around middle school. Um, originally, I wanted to, like, cook. But then right away, my mom's like, well, if you want to make money on that, you got to be, like, really good. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't want to be broke. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do I like next? Okay, games. Except, you know, I, I didn't really know what making games was. I just thought, okay, you think about, okay, you know, maybe you come up with some ideas for some characters. Maybe you come up with, like... What type of game you want to make and then i don't know somebody puts it all together and and there's testing involved and you know that, that's all i really knew um so when i uh you know finally started going to you know school of columbia you know i i mean, I, I did a um i think it was the eighth grade you know that, that was my 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 graduation present from eighth grade to do like a a, a one-week computer camp over at um Michigan University, I don't know which, which one it is. Oh, it's in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and they had a, a couple of curriculums. You know, one was make an actual a game. And the other one was, like, programming applications. I don't know. But that's the one that I did. And I just remember, you know, it was all in, uh, you know, Visual Studio, like Windows Forms, and we made a calculator. And I was like, well, this is boring. I never want to program again. Um, so when it came time to go to Columbia, you know, I was like, ah, 
I know I don't want to be a programmer, so uh-uh. And, you know, they had the art um, concentration, concentration as well. Like, well, I've, I'm not an artist. You know, I can't draw, so that's not for me. Um, and sound, you know, I, I could play a little bit of clarinet, and I could play a little bit of guitar, but in terms of making sound effects, you know, I was like, it didn't seem that appealing. Plus, you know, you look at, like, the... The salaries, like the sound people, they, they make like the least. So, you know, I, I, I thought, well, design sounds good. And then you got people who are like running the studio, you know, they're making the big bucks. So, you know, that, that sounded like for me. And, you know, I had all these ideas of like games I might want to make. I mean, even now, you know, like I got my phone, I have a little, um, uh, a note, you know, in my, 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 the, the notes app, which is all these different game ideas. You know, like this past week, uh, well not yeah, last week. You know, I, I, I dropped some like protein powder in the kitchen, and you know our building has some cockroaches. Not not in my unit. I, 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 I took care of that problem. But I just like okay, what if the cockroaches, eat the protein powder, and got like really buff. Okay, the game idea. No way, roaches, as in like. W H E Y, how they spell whey, like whey protein, and it's like you have to fight really buff roaches. So I don't know, I don't know exactly what like the style of gameplay is, but um, you know that's just the premise. And so like I just have a whole bunch of ideas like that in my phone, and I'm always thinking about you know all these new ideas. So you know for me that's like why the designer uh, curriculum made so much sense to go into. Um, but, you know, it turned out, well, you can't make a game. I mean, you can, you know, design the game, right? But you can't make the game if you don't actually know how to program. So, and, uh, you know, the, the intro class, um, for pro intro programming, you know, that was a nice step in the, uh, you know, uh, 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 in the shallow end of the pool, you know, stepping in the shallow end of the pool, um, to kind of feel it out. And I just remember, um... I don't know if it was the maybe the second week or the third week. I don't remember what the problem was that we were trying to do. Something about like making a whole bunch of triangles on the screen. But I just remember the the professor Morella, if you remember her. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just kept going at this problem. She's like, "You're a programmer, aren't you?" I was like, "No, I'm not." Uh-uh. <laughs> I don't know what you see. I'm just here's a problem. I'm just trying to get through this. That's it. And, but, and, you know, there were other basic things that she covered in that class. I mean, like, the concept of lists, you know, that I, I didn't even, it, it went over my head at that time. But then, you know, a couple of years later, you know, looking at that, that same, like, the concept of, like, a list, um, you know, that's when it, it like, it's clicked. And then over time... You know, things just started clicking more and more. And, you know, the, the thought like, well, if I want to make a game, I have to build it. I have to be able to actually write the code for it, you know, still stuck with me. So I kept pursuing, um, you know, the programming aspect. And I didn't focus so much more on the design because, you know, the more, the more time I spent, like, building a game, the more and more I kept thinking about, like the ways to build it and like like you know when you write a paper or write a story you know you can write the story with no structure I mean it could you know it could have a beginning a middle and the end so George R. R. Martin I think um, you know he says you know every paragraph should have something that advances the story something like that um you know, you could write a story that doesn't have paragraphs that advance the story, and it's just, you know, it's still a story, but it's probably not very good. Um, you know, I liked having to write the code, you know, such that every single line mattered in the grander scheme of how the uh, the game is built. Um, then, you know, every project that I'm doing, I, I I'm constantly thinking about, okay, how do I improve, you know, what I did over 
even like even if it's the same project how do I improve what I'm writing over the previous day um, and so you know sometimes I randomly change things here and there just to you know see if I like that style better maybe it works maybe it doesn't I don't know but I you know I, 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 I don't do it necessarily intentionally it's just kind of happens at like a subconscious level or you know maybe it's just me forgetting how I did it the day before and so I do it an entirely new way and then hey the game works um so <laughs> as long as it runs exactly you know and you know that that's what they I that's what I learned you know going through my the master's program you know they say well there's no such thing as a bad architecture you know an architecture is just more or less meant to you know, fulfill the purpose that it's so it, if it runs, it runs, but doesn't mean that it's stable. Um, you know, you know they they talk about those kinds of applications as big mud balls um, or shanty towns. Um, so yeah, you know, it wasn't immediate that I you know want, knew I wanted to get into like the programming part, but you know I knew right away you know that I did want to be in games. I'm just happy that um, when I started doing it, that uh, you know, it, it it worked out. That I I, I was good at it. Um, you know, there are other people that we went to school with. You know, they're they're probably better at designing. Um, you know, I know visually, I I might say, oh, you know, something looks good, or you know, maybe the design of this level is really good. I don't know, but maybe maybe I don't know anything about that because I. I don't do that enough, you know, I, I can tell you what a good function looks like, but that's because I've written thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of code, so, you know, experience, uh, uh, you know, pr pr pressure, you know, how do you build diamond, C create a diamond with lots of pressure, so. Yeah, the, the more intense pressure you're under, the, the faster you write code, and then the more optimized it is, the more you do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so kind of tagging on to this whole programming aspect of you just percolating over time because like you said you originally started out wanting to go into game design designing everything and turns out that you just ended up being a really good problem solver do you remember the moment where you had that initial thought that went through your mind where it's like huh I might actually be as good of a programmer as I thought I'd be yeah uh, <laughs> probably I mean it, w it would have been that that third year of of school um I remember you know I, I coming out of the second year you know, I hadn't really made anything I think I I put together like that tic tac tac game a stupid idea this is why I don't I haven't spend a lot of the time designing it's, you know it's like okay let's make a game where we are th it's tic-tac-toe but with three players and the third person can remove a, uh, r remove a space you know I mean you play that a hundred times and it's like the game is kind of dumb um, but you know because that's like the only thing I actually like made on my own you know it, you know I felt like I needed to find something to try to build my portfolio whatever and that's when you know that um Wayne, Wayne Janik you know he's you know, nice guy um you know unfortunately no, nobody wanted to work with him on his team but you know I, I was like yeah I'll work with you you know because he was it was his final year so he was doing his capstone and he had to find a team to help him out um and so I was like, you know, I, I don't know, really know much about building games because I, all I built is this dumb little tic-tac-tac game, which isn't that complex, but yeah, I'd love to help, you know. So I came out on the, an intern, right? And so as I'm trying to build all of these little features here and there, I mean, some of the, them is just like, you know, now, if I wanted to make a, a projectile fly from point A to point B, you know, that's, that's child's play, but back then it was like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? How do I, even just like, the input from mapping the input to the movement of the player, um, you know, if I press 
forward on my controller, right? My character should move forward, right? Easy peasy when, um, you know, you, you, your character has a rotation of zero. You know, you're just changing them in one direction. Okay. But now what if he's rotated a little bit and you actually want him to go, you know, this way? Well, you know, forward, you don't want to go this way. So now you have to figure out what this direction is and move him that way. And I mean, now it, it, the, the solution is so easy right now. But back then, that was just like mind bending. Um, I even the remember during uh, our, our game, game design two class, I think it was. You know, we were working on the, uh, our, our team was making that Mewtwo game. And, you know, I, you know same, same prop. Uh, yeah, I, I think I remember that game. Yeah. And, it, you know, it had mapped the, the Xbox controller to the movement of the character. And, I mean, it's spending quite a while trying to get it to work. And it was like, I'd, 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 I'd move him. But then, instead of him walking forward like this, he'd be on his side and then start doing that. And it was like, you know, headache after headache. But eventually, I, I figured it out. And, you know, just like with, uh, you know, that uh, Wayne's game, you know, I, I was having all these problems, but I was able to figure them out. And so, at, you know, at that point, it's like, you know what, I I think I'm really good at this. Um, but, now, you know, looking back at the kind of code that I had written, it probably wasn't that great. Um, but, you know, I, at the end of the day, it works, it works, so... Yeah, it's, it's always fun to look back at code you've written. Sometimes it's very cringe. But to put it into uh, a perspective that the audience can understand it. If you were to compare the lines of code from that specific functionality that you've written back then to how many lines you think it would now if you were to rewrite it, what would those two numbers be? <laughs> I mean, so in terms of like making the character move... I mean, I could probably say, you know, it's it's not difficult to get the input from the controller. Um, you know, the difficult part was mapping the numbers that your controller is, you know, outputting. So when you press forward on the analog stick, you know, the analog stick, it's going to return, you know, an X and a Y, you know, left, right, up, down, you know, a pair, so that you can know which direction that your analog stick is. Uh, being pressed so you know taking that and trying to map that on your character you know that that's the hard part and you know the number of lines of code i mean it's probably like 20 lines of code which you know it's not a lot but trying to do something that simple it kind of is yeah and it's it, it's that number what you think it would take uh take you now yeah it's like now i mean it, i mean three lines of code so. Yeah, so I think that's a pretty good perspective for the audience because it's 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 always mind blowing how far you can optimize code because I know each time I'm rewriting something over and over, there's like you said, there's always a new way to do something, and then tomorrow you can forget what you did last time, and then you just completely rewrite the function. Yeah, but, a absolutely. Um, you know, there's never a right solution. I mean, you know, that's the thing about like engineering. Yeah. I mean, everyone's got a solution. You know. It, there's uh, probably a hundred ways you can build a bridge. Now, some of those br ways, the bridge might collapse over time, but, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, tons of ways. And, um, you know, I, I just watched this movie, uh, Good Night, um, Good Night Something. It was about the, the NASA Mars rover bot. It was kind of cool just, like, listening to them engineer you know, this, this Mars rover to go in outer space, like back in like the nineties or whenever, and just all the different ways that they could approach the problem. It's just like, you know, I mean, there, there's some that are better than others, but you know, you, you won't know until you try it. Yeah. And speaking of not knowing until you're trying to, after you finished that project, um, I know large team was definitely one of the biggest thing for us because that was our senior project how 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 was it for you when you started transitioning from like the large team environment and if you can talk a little bit about how you felt it went versus 
what it was like when you got your first job outside of college and how different was that? Yeah, actually, so looking back on that, I mean, there was this one particular moment that really uh, actually was, was a good thing that, that happened during the, the, during the large team project um, you know, that really affected, you know, like my work style. Um, and, you know, I just remember, uh, I don't remember what I did exactly, but I just remember saying, you know, I, I went and I fixed this stuff, and then there's a whole bunch of emails like, no, nobody told you to do that, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Everyone in the whole department just got an email about me getting yelled at. <laughs> and so at that point, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not doing anything unless it's specifically tasked. I'm not going to go and clean up any code or whatever. I don't care. I'm just going to do exactly that. And so, you know, because of that, then when I started working, you know, I, I, that's literally, if I saw something on the task, I was like, okay, that's what you want. That's what you're getting. And, you know, frankly, my boss loved that. Oh, he loved that because he's worked with tons of other programmers who would do, you know, maybe not exactly that, or they do that and then also change some other things as well. And that would have, you know, grander implications um, you know, that could potentially, you know, I mean, could be, you know, those problems could be very expensive. Um, and you know, it, so it was, a it, that, that's like the most significant thing that happened that I, I took and brought it into my, my everyday work. Yeah. And just to preface and let everybody know as well. So large team, uh, like I said, was uh, a senior project for practically everybody in the game design uh, degree. And it lasted about uh, a whole year, I'd say. That's like two semesters, right? Yeah, well, so the project itself, yeah, that was like... The project itself, yeah. And then like there was also like almost like a year of just planning. I mean, there was the there was a game document class one. And then there's the game doc class two, I think. I, if I remember correctly, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, that, that seemed like forever and a day ago now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So leading on into more of your career now, um, the place that you're at right now, um, based on my understanding, that that wasn't where you were always at, right? You were at a couple of different places before? Literally. So right after school finished, um, you know, it kind of felt like, great, now what do I do with my life? <laughs> you know, you just kind of get on the horse and start shooting a whole bunch of emails out saying like, hey, you know, I, I, you know, I just finished school and I think I'd make a great asset to your team, blah, 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 blah. Also, what video game uh, companies are in Chicago? And it's like, oh, there's only like three. You know, you had NetherRealm, you know, Iron Galaxy, and you had um, this other company. I, I won't name them. Um. And then, you know, there were some other, like, not traditional companies. I think there was a, I forgot what, what their name is, but they were, like, down in the loop, and they made, uh, like, simulations for shopping stores, you know, like, using Unity. I don't remember the name of the company. Um, you know, there was also those other companies, I mean, the, you know, the, the M, M1, the one that you were at. And yeah, M1 and the active, very cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um... The place that, that, that one that I won't name, uh, you know, they, they picked me up and it was just like, this is a game studio? They're horrible. Oh my gosh. I mean, the, the, the people working there, you know, the other engineers, r real nice people. I like them all. Um, but, you know, the guy who was running the place, I mean, there were reviews on Glassdoor that were like, you know, it's horrible. You know, or you don't get your checks on time, things like that. But I thought, well, A, that's in the past. I'm sure they've changed. And B, you know, I've never, they've never had me work for them. So, you know, let's see what happens. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I got sent the email. And, you know, luckily they were like, they were like the only one that replied. And they said, you know, yeah, come on in. Um, so I went in and had a, had a chat, you know, which went pretty well. Uh... And then they said, okay, you know, we're going to send you the programming test and, uh, you know, you can do it in whatever language you want. I was like, okay, great. Because, you know, I, 
I took a C++ class, but you know, I don't really know it too well. Um, but then on the programming test it says, must be done in C++. I was like, oh great, okay. Well this isn't good. Um, and that was like, one, like the main problem. Uh, there was also another problem, it was like, build a, like a UML diagram of like a farm. Like, okay, I thought I did okay on that, I don't know. Of course, probably looking back, I, you know, my, my UML skills weren't nearly as good as what they are today. I've done a lot more since. And going back for my master's, you know, was a nice refresher in all of that. Um, but then, you know, the actual t programming part, it was, you know, given an image, remove all of the white space on the left, right, top, and bottom uh, of the image and which output the image on like the tightest, you know, box. So, you know, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and I was like, I don't know how the hell to do this. I, I tried my best and it wasn't good at all. Um, so, but I submitted it and, and, you know, I got an email back saying, you know, I, would I be interested in like a unpaid internship? Like, okay, I'm just happy to put my foot in the door. So uh, when I did that, uh, and you know, later I found out that, you know, they said, no, oh, my test was horrible. And they didn't even, the, the lead engineer didn't want me, but you know, the boss, he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll try him out. So um, I was thankful for that. Um, but you know, it was, it was cool, you know, being able to try some VR stuff. You know, they had some older projects I kind of opened up and dug around in the code, even though it wasn't very clear, uh, because they had a framework that was, you know, very old um, and hard to understand. But, you know, I, it was, I guess it was exposure. I think the most significant thing I took away from, you know, being there was just opening up Xcode and, and learning how to build to iOS. <laughs> Good, everything. good old Xcode. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, as I, I, I had an iPhone, not an iPhone, I had an iPod, like a touch, but I didn't have like a Mac or anything, so I, you know, I, I didn't have any experience, um, you know, with any of that. So it was kind of cool to see, okay, so I connect my phone or my tablet or whatever to the computer Oh, no, you can build right to it. Oh, very cool. So, um, you know, that was all new for me. And I, I'd done that with Android, but only because you did it with, on Android, like, during school. So it was kind of, yep. I learned from you from do, for how to do that. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to go into all the specifics, but, you know, it was, it was supposed to be, like, a three-month internship. And, you know, I, I, I had left a month before it was supposed to end because, you know, I was like, well, I just left my other job. Um, you know, I was just working at the grocery store and I thought, well, let me leave that so that I can spend full time at this internship and show my worth and all of that and learn how to do it. And then, you know, they ended up giving me a key to the place, which was cool. Um, but you know, I, so I, it just wasn't working out. So I left, and then I just felt like kind of lost for a week. But then luckily, you know, you're like, hey, you know, Pearson is looking for some extra help. You want in? <laughs> yeah, I do. So, you know, I was always thankful for that. Um, and you know, I, I mean, I, I didn't want to believe that it was going to happen. So I was, but I was happy for the opportunity. So I met with, uh, you know, the boss, and well, I guess he liked what I had to say, or at least he liked what I said I was going to charge, <laughs> uh, which I wrote down 20 bucks, but, you know, because I was like, well, that's, that's what will cover my rent and food. You know, I, I wasn't going to try to be greedy, even though you, you had mentioned, like, how, how much, like, you and everyone else was getting paid, but, you know, I just, like, I didn't want to assume I was going to get that, um, and, you know, I, yeah, you know, he, he liked me, so he brought me on, and I, I recommend someone else, and he didn't like him at all, <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's fine, um, 
And, you know, that lasted for the five or so months. I mean, it was only supposed to be, like, a three-month contract from when I was Yeah. Told. It, it was a very short contract that definitely extended out a bit. Um, and, yeah, it, it was definitely an interesting time, too, because after that, we, we all kind of went our separate ways and trying to find what was that next opportunity uh, that, to chase after. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, did, did you land in your current job after that, or were you in another space at that Yeah, point? so actually right after school... You know, before I even had my internship, I actually interviewed um, with my current job. You know, because they were trying to wrap up the she- the M M&M and M game, and you know, at that time, um, you know, I found them on the Unity forums. So, at that time, you know, I said, well, if you want a contract, you know, be a freelancer. You know, you got to have all the hardware and you know all of that stuff. Because I, all I had was my my crappy laptop. I had. Um, you know, an Android tablet, and, the, and that's it. Um, so I said, okay, you know, thank you very much. And then, uh, you know, towards the three months into the, you know, the Pearson job, you know, I, I was still doing like little freelance things here and there for some guy on the Unity forums, and he was doing some weird game for, you know, the the 2016 elections that were coming up um but he needed to get in-app purchasing in there and unity had just come out with their in-app purchasing um integration and so i i tried putting it in there and he published it and boy that was like a challenge because i was just looking at you know for me it felt like advanced code but it wasn't but it felt like it um there was a lot of you know like uh, like uh, you know events that I, I I didn't know anything about like events, um, but it used events, and so trying to read all that was like very boring. Uh, but I got it done, and for whatever reason, when he went to publish it to the Android, to try and test it, it locked up his app, and I was like, well, I have no idea. So then I thought, well, let me go and just start building an app really quickly so I can try it out, too. And, I mean, after, you know, going through that, you know, at that time, I mean, the, that integration, uh, you know, being as new as it was, you know, the only way to test it was publishing it on the, um, on the Play Store. You know, there were no test accounts, and there was no local test. So it was very painful um, yeah, it, it's it's almost amazing how far things have changed just within this past seven years alone. It, it's absolutely yeah. unbelievable. It, it's crazy, you know, test accounts even, and yeah. Um, so, but you know, having, having built that, I, my game worked fine with the in-app purchases, so I don't know what was up with his. So it doesn't <laughs> seem like it was something on my end. Um and then I, Some oh, random I person is again. gonna listen to this podcast, and they could be like, "Hey, I know that guy. That's the guy that oh, built gosh. the app." Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, if you're listening, thanks for the opportunity. It, uh, if I didn't, if I didn't fail at at working on your game, I wouldn't have gone and done my game, which is you know as basic as it was. It you know it it uh, it, it, it gave me a, a space to try all of these features, you know, that try to do like a leaderboard and like the in-app purchases and try to actually, okay, let me build uh, a whole system where I, you know, player can earn money and they can spend the money on to unlock upgrades and, you know, writing code like, okay, well, how am I going to actually present upgrades on like the player's, you know, character or whatever, um, you know, and just all of this stuff. And because I did that, you know, and I, I worked with uh, a couple of artists and, you know, Joe as well, he helped me out with some of the music, which, you know, I was very thankful for that, and he didn't, you know, he wasn't charging an arm and a leg, um, and I, I, I didn't have three dollars in my name other than what I had from Pearson, you know, and, which was nice, um, but, you know, I, I, I was able to make that 
you know, like a game from start to end. And I got it published on, you know, the Android, iOS, and even Windows Phone. Um, and, you know, Windows Phone, for whatever reason, it 12,000 downloads. So I was like, okay, great. But Yeah, and talking a little bit, too, about that, uh, that game that you put together, I know that was... I, I feel like that was uh, one of the first games that you worked on as your own personal project after we uh, went out to college. Do you remember that feeling that you've gotten when you first submitted the game to the app stores? <laughs> Absolute fear. I mean, it was like, oh, is anybody going to play it? Is anybody going to like it? Are they going to yell at me and say, your game is dumb? Uh, is it going to even get accepted into the app store? You know, is it going to crash? Oh my God. It was just horrible feeling. And you know, yeah, I, it's funny. Cause I, a lot of people I've talked to, um, as well, like some, sometimes the excitement is there, but the very, uh, the recurring theme that I always found amongst the game developers is that, that consistent fear of what if somebody hates this and if, if you, the current you right now, were to kind of go back in time and were able to t talk to yourself from that point in time, is there anything specific that you would kind of tell them to change their mind, or would you be feeling the exact same thing you think? Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I would just say grab a beer and try to go to sleep. I mean, it doesn't. I don't know. I I still get scared. I mean, you know, when when we are um, okay. You know, re more recently, you know, having to integrate, like, databases that can handle large volumes of data and then running jobs that can quickly uh, crunch the numbers of that data, um, you know, I still get fears, uh, you know, because, you know, they, they, you know, they get told, well, whenever we do need the data, those numbers, we might need them, you know, we need those numbers to be crunched in, you know, ten, five, five, ten minutes. Like, oh my God, five to ten minutes. Oh, I don't have 40 million records to test with to see if it's going to do that. You know, I, I can get a couple thousand records in there for a test, and if it's fast, it's fast. But, you know, I don't know if this design is going to be that fast when there's actually that much data coming in every day. So. Yeah, no, I, I definitely understand what you're talking about there because I deal with that on a daily basis sometimes too. The, the sheer volume of stuff now that's on the database is absolutely nuts. And especially with mobile apps these days too, you need to get everything loaded within those two seconds or else people aren't going to use it. Yeah. And like, like you said, trying to come up with test data for that sometimes is impossible. But uh, I know at least for me, I've gotten so much better at programming because I have to start automating how to get those 500,000 records. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, that's why I'm an advocate for paying someone else to manage that server, you know, using like a, a back end as a service kind of provider. You know I mean? Like for games, yeah. there's a brain cloud, which is really good. It used to be game sparks. That was really good, but Amazon bought them and now it's just, and it's just not great. Um, you know, but, you know, because those companies, it's their job to have a service that's going to be sustainable and can handle yep. all of that if you've got the money. Um, but, you know, no guarantee it's going to be good. So, um, well, you know, I won't say guarantee. I'll say like 99.9%, .9%, whatever that number is. Yeah, it's it's that point one that you got to worry about. Exactly. And actually, you know, they told me um, in my service oriented architecture class you know how how available you know do you want your service because you know it, it'll always be every every like extra decimal point whatever you know that's going to be like thousands and thousands and thousands of more dollars just to get that extra nine added at the end <laughs> yeah it's it's absolutely crazy and Another thing I want to touch up on here too, because you mentioned um, fail quite uh, quite a little bit, and it's also the recurring theme here in this podcast as well. Because a lot of other people I've interviewed as well, they there was always that point in time 
where they just weren't sure if this is the career that they want to pursue and all these thoughts start percolating in the head and, and of course they start questioning the decisions they're making uh, but thankfully they, they kept pursuing and pushing through and for you in your case was there a moment in time where you had to stop and take a step back and ask yourself if this programming or game design career was something that you wanted to do and if there was how did you overcome that and step past that barrier i wouldn't say i stepped back at any point it was more of i had that fear but i still had to keep like doing stuff and so i mean you know during the internship when i was you know being screamed at because the game wasn't working um the next morning even though it was like well that wasn't my task to make the game work my task was to do something else you know that that problem already existed so you know you know that um you know in those long nights being there from 10 a.m to like 1 a.m yeah 10 a.m to 1 a.m long days consecutively just trying to get stuff to work and figuring it all out um and then even like even in my current job i mean you know at the beginning there were a couple of times where you know, I just kept thinking, like, and there's probably uh, trauma, <laughs> trauma from that internship, where it's just always that uh, fear of, okay, if I don't get this done, that's it, I'm going to get fired. Um, you know, we, we implemented Apple Music early on when I was with the company. Apple Music, you know, that's iOS stuff. I don't know Objective-C. Great. I mean, I told them, like, you know, I... I don't know this. Uh, I was very honest, and they said, "Well, you know, that's fine. We, you know, we can find a contractor or whatever." And so, you know, we reached out to Stan's Assets. Um, you know, they worked with us, and they were very cheap. Um, it ended up costing like just five hundred dollars for them to build the whole plugin, which was oh, awesome. But I was still freaking out, like, "Great, now we can actually like take this plugin. It's not integrated like with uh, the Unity code at all. It's just." It's a plugin, and the plugin is exposed in you know the Unity. But now I, I still gotta actually like, use it somehow. And I mean I'm reading the documentation and everything, and Apple's like, okay, you gotta do everything in all these steps and whatever. Okay, great. I, I trust you guys, and so I I called the functions that were exposed, and then I'm just trying to test the damn thing on my phone, like praying, oh my gosh, please play music, please play music, and then oh, it played music, and I was. Like sweet relief, I'm worth something. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's funny because your your prayer is the prayer I use when I hit build on Xcode. Please build, please build, please build. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's always something. I mean, you stupid linker errors, whatever. You got um, maybe two Objective C files that have external C, and then they both have the same named function in two different places, which prevents it from breaking but it doesn't tell you that because it'll just throw that 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 linker error with a negative one and then you gotta kind of like really read the error and it's just you know have headaches um but you know that that problem happened numerous times while at this job and i mean it it, I, it probably wasn't as bad as i made it out to be like if i if i had real problems i could have probably said something it would have been fine, but, you know, I just kept having that problem, fear of, like, if I don't do this, they might think that I'm not worth anything. You know, I'm not, um, what's the word? Com competent? Competent, yes. Because, that goes back to the internship, you know, I said, you know, the day that I left, like, who's going to want to hire you if you're not worth anything, if you're not competent? You know, they're not going to want to give you any money to do this if you can't do it. So I've always had that fear. Um, yeah, which which is very interesting because I, I feel like depending on the industry as well, it's that that fail and push past moments is very comparable to uh, like in your situation, in your case, that, that fear where you really have no time to really contemplate over that. It's always, this has to be done. I need to push past that. And it's it's almost like you're in a constant state of that. But even now, even, do you do you feel like you are 
in a state where you have a little bit more of that confidence or is it still uh, the fear that's creeping up on you yeah no i, I definitely um feel a lot better now you know i mean i'm, I'm def uh you know because i mean i've been doing this for seven years with them and i mean they you know the way that they've treated me and everything just really has made me feel better i mean you know between raises and then you know being flown out there to um visit you know paying for the hotel airfare all of that and taking me out for drinks and uh you know they just i mean they, they just paid for my home master's program as well and so i was like and i was i every quarter every class i've taken and literally been able to reapply that back into work as well and so i you know because because of that constant um reinforcement of you're doing a good job you know i don't have the fear as much but i mean there'll be the occasional task where i just look at it and just like I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Um, you know, right now, I mean, we're doing a lot of stuff in TikTok, and frankly, I mean, being in TikTok, they they've got a piece of software you can use to make effects. And in terms of programming, it's very low level. I mean, I remember you talking about your programming class you had, and you were in C, basic C, not C plus plus. You were in basic C. Basic C. And I don't remember what you said wasn't in there. I think it was maybe strings or maybe arrays. I, I, I think it was strings. You said strings weren't in there. Yeah, I think it... For any programming person watching this, do not hold this against me. I honestly don't know C as well. But I think it might have been strings because I know there was something that wasn't included by default. You have to include and import it that in. And oftentimes, I think strings ended up being the case for not like a lot of programming languages, honestly, which is very odd. Yeah, so it's like being in TikTok, you know, a lot of those features that you think are like it should have aren't in there. I mean, you, know, you can do a for loop. There's no way to break out of the for loop. <laughs> like, okay, great. Um, also, there's no such thing as labels. You, you can't have a text label in there. You have to use images of the word you want to put on there. I did not know that. That's interesting. It's a headache. It's a big headache. And you can you can get the item you want out of an array by index. You can access that specific item. You can't modify specific items in an array by index. That's a pain and a half. <laughs> so um so you know they, they're doing something like that it's like oh, i don't want to do it but you know you just, just kind of mull over the problem and, and so, okay you know I, I got an idea for a potential solution let me push ahead um but we, i guess the one thing that i can think of off the top of my head was we had a problem bluetooth uh we got somebody reviewed on our app uh before we took it down you know, that uh, the app doesn't work with my Bluetooth headphones. I don't got no Bluetooth headphones. Great. All of a sudden, that office had to go get Bluetooth headphones. I actually, I think maybe I had Bluetooth headphones, but I never thought to try with the app. All of a sudden, we need Bluetooth working by tomorrow. Like, oh gosh. So I spent the whole, all the way until like 5 in the morning just, you know, trying to write stuff to make the Bluetooth work on iOS because apparently on Android, it works great. It was instantly connects to the app and no problems. But on iOS, it's like you gotta write the special code. And then because the app had so many, like so much stuff in it, I mean, it took so long to compile as well. I was just like, you know, let me make a whole new project that doesn't have anything in it, but this Bluetooth thing, code exposed so I can quickly like rapidly test and really understand okay what are all the problems and oh great i also have to go and modify this file that that unity you know generates and outputs um you know just for like initializing the game in you know the objective c um or maybe, maybe it was c plus plus yeah i think it was objective c yeah um that i really not supposed to touch 
but I had to go and touch it so that I can initialize the Bluetooth speaker headphones uh, to work with the app. Um, and I didn't want to do that, but you know, just had to keep pressing forward. And luckily, I got it eventually. But it was yeah, yeah, not without pain and turmoil. Yep, I mean that's I, I feel like that often comes a lot within the field that we're in. Once once you're given an emergency task, you're programming until that task gets done. And it's like I I'm pretty sure you've done this as I have. Like I've rewritten stuff countless times within the span of ten hours just to get one thing working. Mm -hmm. And when it finally works, that's the best night's sleep I would ever <laughs> get. Yeah, I those kind of kind of days I just you know it'll always be coming the next day and the boss will say you know you know maybe I come in late but you know he's like don't even worry about it or you know it gets towards the end of the day it's like you know go home early it's fine you know you worked yeah. really hard last night let's call it early um but I'm, I'm fortunate that I haven't had any dumpster fires like that in quite a while um so you know which is refreshing but also i guess kind of scary because it also makes me think am i actually doing am i working hard enough <laughs> Should, well, yeah. <laughs> i shouldn't be able to just go home at five o'clock i i'm supposed to be working until like nine o'clock at night yeah and that that's often the problem i find with myself sometimes too especially when things are done early but then like the, the difference with me right is that i'm on top of managing a bunch of client stuff and working for the agencies i'm also trying to build my own Mm -hmm. So the rest of the time after five is consistently building stuff. And then it comes to a point where resting feels guilty. And I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but it's just, just a tremendous amount of guilt about doing nothing and trying to unwind all of that mm -hmm. to take that time off is definitely challenging. And I would recommend people try it. It's challenging, but I would recommend you try it. No, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, a few weeks ago, I just sat on the couch like on a Friday that that was off and, and i played games the whole day but it felt fun to play games but boy did i feel like guilty you know um and you know kind of just adding on to what you said too i think i, I just saw something from steve harvey talking about you know people who are really successful you know how many hours of sleep are you getting you know the the really successful ones you know, definitely aren't getting the full eight hours. So, you know, that says something. Yep, they they always have their brain active and working on something. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Well, we're approaching uh, the mark here. So before we end this, um, as you call it, your hot wings moment. Is there anything you would like to tell the audience and listeners who's listening to watching this? Um, talk about your blog or your website a little bit. Yeah, so I have my uh, my blog. I think it's blogs. I don't even remember what it's called. I'll, I think we can edit it in post or something. I got my blog. Yeah, ev everything will be in the description, so it'll okay. be safe there. So yeah, I got my blog. Um, I got my YouTube channel that... I'm adding content where I, where, when I can. Um, you know, right now I'm, I'm working my way through uh, AI for Games, um, the third edition by Ian Millington. Um, you know, because that's an area that I lack, and I thought, oh, AI is this big deep topic. I, I, I don't care about you know the Jet Chat GPT AI, you know or the the image generators AI. I just care about AI in games specifically, and uh, you know how to, how, to, how can I write code, um, you know that makes you know AI, you know for the type of games that I want to do. You know, like a, a if I were to do a strategy game, you know, like a Age of Empires or whatever, and I have like a whole bunch of troops. You know, how do I write code for those troops to attack another group of troops? So you know things like that. Um, and I'm learning a lot so far in the 30 or so pages that I've gotten through <laughs> out of the 1,200. <laughs> right. um, and for anybody who is curious, I'll also um, work with you, Cameron, to see what book that is. I can leave a link in the description for that, too. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Um, but, yeah, other than that, you know, that, that, that's all that I got going on right now. So um, 
you know, just uh, stay tuned for more content from there. <laughs> All right. Well, Cameron, thank you so much for joining me today. And again, you have completely marked six episodes and proved that I've been doing this for six years. Six years. Six months. Feels like six years. <laughs> right. All right. Thanks, Cameron. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs>